बने को थे शुरू में तरह धेरे जाना नेने भूमि हुंसा बनने कुरो आदिकंश कुरा यहाँ आये रा सब इस बेलाई जानी सब इस प्रैक्टिस करी रखी कोई होला बनने मन साये ले पनी अनुभव लगाये मिले रखी है सेनो रा धेर थोर कुरा आरु आये बुझे ना बने पासी कुरा गानो ला सो दूँगा सॉरी वी डोंट हैव ट्रांसलेटर्स एनीवे दे आर गोइंग टू यूके वी होप दे आर Okay, well, Mr. President, members of the committee from Hong Kong, I understand the Central Committee members here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, most importantly, friends, Namaste and Namaste. And there's a few things that are, are clear after the campaign that we've just won in England. The first is that British people respect and admire the Gurkhas and they want the Gurkhas fighting alongside them. The second thing that's true is that the British government knows that it's foolish to fight against the Gurkhas because Gurkhas will not give up, do not give up and will win. I was last here two years ago and I'm delighted to be able to come back and be del I'm delighted to come back with the policy that we've got. But a lot has happened in those two years. I'm not the other Gurkha soldier who retired since 1997 and alongside every other foreign and commonwealth soldier that has served in the British forces gives options to you and your families that have not been there before. It gives you options for work. It gives you options for accommodation. It gives you options for health. And it gives your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and the generations that come after that the choice as to what they do and where they do it. And for that, I congratulate you. We've been involved in this case for three years. But let's remember that Padam Bahadur Gurum has been fighting for almost 20 years for Gurkha rights. He is the man who has brought to you today the victory that you've got. Thank you. We must mention some other people who are very important to this. And I'm thinking particularly about Tul Bahadur Pun VC and Lachiman Gurum VC. Two very honourable men from the Brigade of Gurkhas. Two men who in the rain, the sleet, the sunshine, the winds, came out time and time again to ensure that the message that we were pushing in the UK was heard by all. They ensured that this matter became front page news. They ensured that people did not forget the Gurkhas back home. And to them we owe a debt of honour. To them, honourable men, we say thank you. Well, let's remember now what's happened over the last two years. And I apologise if some of this has already been covered by Padam, but my Nepali is not as good as my English. Anyway, we understand. So I understand bits of it, but not all of it. Um, so since, since I was here in, in 2007, a lot has happened in the case. You remember that in July of 2007, Tul Bahadur Pun VC came to the UK. Now we used that as a moment to ensure that the Gurkha case and the Gurkha issues were at the forefront of people's minds. With open arms, the people of the country were disgusted that the government had refused entry to such a fine man. And he landed at Heathrow Airport on the 4th of July, Independence Day, as far as Americans are concerned. And two days later, on the 6th of July, the patron of Gayso was sitting down with the Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, having a cup of tea and shaking hands. And Gordon Brown welcomed him in and gave a welcome to the Gurkhas. And after that, 
The cases went forward and in August orders were made and we were seeking disclosure of documents from the other side in this case and make no mistake about it, the people that we have been fighting throughout have been the Ministry of Defence and unfortunately the Brigade of Gurkhas itself at times. By the beginning of 2008, no documents were coming from the other side. They said they had none, because we were attacking the policy that was keeping you out. Remember that this is the third policy that affects you. There was a disgraced policy of 2004, then probably the shortest lived policy in the history of policies in the UK, the one that came out on the 24th of April, and now we have the right one. But to attack it, we needed the documents. And by the beginning of 2008, our government was telling us that they didn't have any. Well, we went back to court on that. We did freedom of information requests on that. But we had to switch the case from the immigration courts to the high court. And by the time that we came to the high court in July of last year, the judges were turning against the government in this case. The judge ordered the disclosure of the documents. And lo and behold, from having no documents, by the end of August last year, 1,256 pages of documents relating to you turned up on our desks. And therein you could see what was going on. You could see that the Home Office back in 2004 wanted to allow all Gurkhas in, wanted equal treatment, wanted justice for you. But the people against it were in the MOD, in the Ministry of Defence. And they campaigned and campaigned long and hard to ensure that the pre-97 retirees Jonathan Sedgwick. And I reminded him that when the old policy, the policy that was struck down, was in force, there was a specific statement in there that there was no intention to split families. And he understands that. And in fact, the policy has been expanded through our representations to, to incorporate the good things that were in the old policy. So we now have a situation where you got, when you, when you have a look at it, have a look at paragraph 13.2, that's the one that you need to look at. And it really, the opening line of it says that if there is a, a, a parent or a relative residing in the UK or intending to settle in the UK, then that is a special circumstance factor that must be taken into account. There are others in it, and we, you know, for, for another time, when you're making applications, we'll go through it. But, I'll say two things. Um, if you're making applications on behalf of dependents, I think you're best doing that through lawyers, because there are particular technical points that need to be covered. And details of all relatives in the UK needs to be understood. Any difficulties, any illnesses, any financial dependencies, they all need to be understood. And the applications to be made need to fit, need to, and if they do fit with the policy, then my view is that our government in the UK is looking to allow them in. Let's remember the numbers that were being spoken about. When the Ministry of Defence was trying to scaremonger the government, when they were trying to prevent the deal that we have now got, they were saying that between 150, sorry, 100 and 150,000 people would qualify and come into the UK under the policy that we now have. Now the numbers might be smaller, but the government in their own psyche, in their own mind, have got that type of figure in mind. Now we think it's much smaller, in fact, we think that the, the, the number's likely to go around maybe 10 to 15,000, perhaps 35,000. I suppose at the end of the day, until, until people actually start to make the move, we don't know what the real um, migration figures will be. It says, if you want to see the monument to Sir, Christ, Sir Christopher Wren, then simply just look around you. Look around the magnificent cathedral. Well, Padam and Geso, if you want to see the monument to your achievements, then just look around you. Look around Papua. <laughs> Look around Kathmandu, look around Dauran, look around Macau, look around anywhere where there are Gurkha soldiers and that 
is the monument to the fantastic success that Gay Show has had. Thank you.